<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Fixing my hair like always. The meme. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Untangled episode five. Really excited to be here with you guys. Last day of May. What a month it has been. And I'm um, really grateful to be here with you guys today. How is everyone doing? Where are you from? How are you feeling? How is everybody feeling? Wales, Germany, Norway, <clears throat> Ontario. I love looking at where everybody is from. I love you too, Taz. Denver, Portugal. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the last couple of days. Mill Valley, you're in my neighborhood, Sabine. Qatar, wow. Spain, Lithuania, Greece, Istanbul. I love Istanbul. Oh, my goodness gracious. I was there for about 10 days. I was supposed to teach uh, Bikram yoga at a Bikram yoga studio in Istanbul. But when was it? 2014. 14? Yeah. November, October, November of 2014. But uh, I ended up coming back to the United States and going to Dallas, Texas and teaching Bikram yoga for a while there. <laughs> All right. So let's get started. Let's get it started in here. Okay. So first, thank you guys so much for joining me on another episode. Really grateful to be here and grateful for all your support and all your love. If you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel and then click the bell, the little um, bell button that you see next to the subscribe, and you'll get notified when I go live. So every week at 9 a.m. California time on Tuesday, I go live for these shows. If you don't want to miss it, subscribe and click the little bell button. You'll get notified um, as soon as I go live. Um, I think that's it. Let me just dive in. Let's just dive into uh, to what I've been experiencing the last three or four days. I also want to take your questions today. Um, so I want to spend some time, maybe half of the show, answering some of your questions. Please give us your recipe for the cacao drink. Um, well, I did it wrong the first time, but... Um, the second time I found out the correct way to do the cacao drink, my friend uh, Rebecca Cartsy B, she gave me the right way to make cacao. So my recommendation is to go and go to a, the bulk section of your store, grocery store. I don't like buying things in packages. If I can buy it in bulk, I'd prefer to buy it in bulk. So um, go get cacao powder if you can in bulk. Um, I got rose petals, so get rose petals from the bulk section of your herb store or whatever store. Get cayenne and um, get, what else did I put in it? Cinnamon. Basically, you heat up about eight ounces of water. And then you put in about, wait, not eight ounces. Um, I don't know, like a cup. Is that eight ounces? Cup of water, two cups of water, whatever you want. Um, put in like two or three teaspoons teaspoons of the cacao powder and start stirring it. Um, pour in, put in a little like like a little whatever this is called, like a little like snippet of cayenne, um, a little snap snippet of cinnamon, um, and then just let it start to turn into like a chocolate water type of thing, like a chocolate milk. And then at the end, put in the rose petals. Um, it only takes a few minutes to make. And then voila, you're done. You've got your cacao uh, concoction. It's pretty powerful. I will say I did a, many of you guys know, a dash. Thank you. <laughs> a dash or a pinch. What did I say? What is wrong with me? Oh my goodness gracious, great balls of fire. What is that? What? I don't even know what I was saying. 
Anywho, I've never had cacao. I've never done a cacao drink or made one, and it's freaking phenomenal. It's really, really good. A, snip, a smidgen. A snippet. What the hell is a snippet? Yeah, I don't know what a snippet is. Ignore that. Um, it's a pinch. <laughs> Anywho, highly recommend it, you guys. Go make it. It's freaking phenomenal. Burst open your heart. Um, does it need sweetener? The cinnamon, I used cinnamon. It did, mine didn't need sweetener, believe it or not. Hi, Kat. Thank you for the super chat. I did not use sweetener. I used, again, I put the cacao powder. I put um, cayenne, cinnamon. Um, what else did I put in it? And the rose petals. That was it. And it was so good. So I didn't use a sweetener. I didn't use a milk or an alternative milk. Um, I'm sure if you use like oat milk or almond milk or something, it'll make it a lot creamier, but I didn't do that. Um, but yeah, try it out. Try it out. Thanks, Taz, for the super chat. All right, so let's get going. I want to share a little bit about what I was experiencing the last couple of days because one of the reasons I started this, ep this show is... I wanted to um, talk about the, the uncomfortable moments. I wanted to talk about the moments that we don't understand, that we kind of hide behind, we don't talk about, we don't share. Maybe there's shame or guilt or, or um, feeling like we aren't normal, right? Because people don't talk about uh, the uncomfortable. We don't talk about the things that we think are not uh, okay to be experiencing right now. And I think that is such a, 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 a it, it's, there's an, there's a unfortunateness around that because this evolution in consciousness that we are all going through is brand new for all of us. So we've never done it before. We don't know what it's like to experience energetic shifts like this. We don't know what it's like to lose our friends and our family and our job, like everything that's just kind of falling apart in ways that we never really imagined. Uh, we don't have a playbook for this. And I think that shining the light in a very human, humble way to every little intricate way in which we are experiencing this is the greatest gift. It's the greatest gift for ourselves. And it's the greatest gift for everybody else that is coming uh, through this, that it's going to be going through this behind us, right? That are following in our footsteps. So let's make this normal. Let's normalize all of the ways that we're experiencing this that we don't want to talk about, that people don't talk about, right? Screw it. Who cares? The more we can normalize all of the things that we have been taught to not talk about, the easier it will be to get through this. And because everything that we are going through is energetic, you can't see it necessarily. It's hard to dissect. It's hard to explain. It's hard to talk about. So it allows us to keep it in even more because we don't even know how to explain it to people, especially if these people aren't going through it, right? And maybe they are, but because you're not talking about it and they're not talking about it and no one's talking about it, then it's like the, the big white pink elephant in the room. So. Excuse me. I um, I want to share what I what I experienced the last three days. I've experienced this on and off for a couple of years now, but I'm really finally be able to kind of dissect it on an energetic level. So here's what it feels like to me. This is the best way that I can describe it. It feels as if. And bear with me, because again, this is all energetic. So I'm trying to describe like physically what's happening energetically. There's a version of me that I am in a lot of my, in, during my days, right? And it's this version of me that is focused on my work, that feels in alignment with my voice and my purpose and my mission. Um, it wants to show up for the world. Um it likes doing the videos. It's a huge part of who I am on the planet. And when I'm in that aligned state, uh, I feel like I'm on, like I'm, I'm alive, okay? There's another version of me that 
mm, quiets that aligned work version and just shows up and plays and laughs and dances and is more kind of, I like to call it human. Okay. It, um, it's like it puts that aligned version of I'm doing my work to bed and then I just go and play, right? And I just enjoy. Then there's this in-between version, which is what I was in the last couple of days. And when I say version, I literally mean an expression of myself, how I'm experiencing myself. I think it's so important that we start really recognizing what version we are in in the moment and not making any of it wrong. So if you imagine that we are one whole consciousness experiencing a human journey in a human body, there are all these aspects, energetic aspects that show up to participate. Not just one. We are a rainbow of aspects that come into play right? And it's it's the same way that your eyeball, that your eye works, right? I learned this in school. I'm sure you everybody did, right? When you look at something and you see the candle, you're actually only looking at one tiny part of the candle, but the eye can grab the entire candle. You're not looking at an entire candle though. You're looking at one tiny piece of that candle. It's the same thing with who we are. We are whole. We are one whole consciousness in physical form. But when we show up, we're showing up as one aspect each moment. Each moment, it's a new aspect that's showing up. And I think what we're learning how to do right now is to allow and to recognize all the different aspects of us that want to show up and play and that there's nothing wrong with whatever aspect is showing up. So the last couple of days, so there's an aspect of me that's very prominent in my life. It's the aligned version of me that show ups to serve, right? And maybe I'm a bit obsessed with it, right? Like I, I, I love serving. I love being of service. I love being in that aligned state. It feels so good. It feeds my soul, right? But when I'm always in that aligned state of work, 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 purpose, 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 mission, 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 sometimes I forget about this aspect that just wants to play and have fun. So I was, it's been a, it's been um, a challenge for me to learn how to balance that. Then there's this version of me that's in between there where I'm not in the aligned state, okay, in my mission, in my purpose, I can't grab that. It's not there. I don't know how to show up. I could barely do videos. I can't grab my book. I don't even know what I wrote about. I can't connect to the book. I can't connect to my voice. I can't connect to anything. I can't connect to that aspect that shows up and serves humanity. Energetically, I cannot grab it. This version of me that loves to play and dance and be silly, I can't grab it. I cannot grab that version. There's, there's the, the, this, this, this aspect of me that finds itself in between this wobbly, weird, who am I? What am I doing on the planet? Why am I here? Aspect showed up the last couple of days. Because I'm used to being in this aspect, I was able to rest in it because I know that this aspect, every aspect that we are in always changes. It always moves. That's how the energy works in this quantum field. We're never just one aspect. And if you are, you want to ask yourself why you're trying to control yourself. You should be experiencing yourself in many different aspects, right? Just like it's just shifting, just like you feel emotion. You, 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 your emotional states are always moving. Your thoughts always moving. Behaviors always moving. Everything is in movement or flow, including aspects of us. What happens is that we, we judge aspects of us and we only want to be certain aspects, especially if people love these aspects. Oh my God, I love it when you're like this. Then you think it's wrong when you're not. I love it when you're happy and go lucky. I love it when you're funny and when you dance. I love it when you're, and they don't say that they love it when you're quiet and when you're reserved and when you're introverted, right? So then you start judging yourself. I'm like, oh my God, maybe I should always be. Thank you so much for the super chat, Mile. Maybe you should always be in these in these states that everybody likes, these versions of you. We can't. 
We can't control. Here's the thing. We cannot control the aspects that we are showing up as. We have to just surrender to it. We have to surrender to it. And because I'm used to this, I don't, I'm not grabbing like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Oh my, because in the beginning, the last couple of years I've had, I've been in this state where it's like, holy shit, I don't know who I am. I, I literally, I don't know who I am. I don't know how to speak. I don't know how to teach. I have nothing to teach. I have nothing to share. I ha I have it's and to me it's like a grabbing I can't grab. To you it may be something else like you don't know how to show up as the mom or you don't know how to show up as the wife or the husband, right? You don't know how to show up as the student. You don't know how to go to work, right? Whatever it is, it's you. It's me becoming aware of actually being energetic aspects of ourselves. So we're starting to become aware of the energetic world. We're starting to recognize all these different aspects that come in and come out. The more you realize that that's what's happening, the less you try to control it and the more you trust it. I got to trust this. I got to trust that this is what is showing up as me for me right now. And I got to let it just be. I have to move through it. I have to let it move me like a river. So even yesterday, I visualized myself in a river. I was like, okay, I'm in a river and I'm just moving, right? And I'm bumping into certain trees that are on that in that river, but I'm not going to grab the tree. I'm just going to let it hit me. Maybe it hurts. Maybe it creates a bruise but I'm just going to flow through what I'm experiencing right now, right? Because I can move into fear of like, oh my God, what if I never teach again? Oh my God, what if I don't ever, what if I can't grab my book? What if I can't talk about it? It's hard to explain what this feels like. Maybe I'm, I'm sure you guys understand, but um, it's like, when you can't grab things, you feel um, you feel like you don't exist or you're not here, like you're floating. You're in the world, but not really in the world. Um, you feel like you are. What's the word I'm looking for? Where you're um, you're not physically there, like um, like a shadow, right? And because it feels so real, because I'm so in each moment I'm experiencing, I freak the freak out. I'm like, oh my God, what, what if this is it? What if this is it? The only reason I know that it's not permanent is because I've experienced it multiple times in the past. And when I first started experiencing it, I thought I was losing my mind. I literally thought I was losing my mind. I would call my mom up and be like, I think I might be losing my mind because I don't know who I am right now. I don't know if I'm going to be able to ever do a video again. What if this is it? What if this is, what if I'm done? And then it would pass. And the next day I would wake up and I would be back in that aligned state where it's like, okay, here you go off to the races. You're back in that aligned state. And the only way that I can experience, describe this is that it's energetic. It's an energetic feeling. It's an energetic experience. It's these different aspects that go like this, that merge in and out. And our only job is to stay present with it and, that, and to trust that there is a method to this madness that we're experiencing. There is a method to it. There is a divinity to it. There's a divine design to every single thing that we're going through. And every single thing that you are experiencing right now is an energetic river. It's an energetic flow that you're in, that you're learning how to let go in. You're learning how to stop trying to find the answers the whys, the when, the how, the what. Energy doesn't hold those answers. Every answer that you need, that you're looking for, is in the moment that you're experiencing whatever it is you're trying to find the question to. Energy doesn't have answers. It only has experience. 
So when you're trying to find answers for something, you're pulling yourself out of the only answer you'll ever find, which is the present moment experience of it. And so the more you start to get comfortable with stop trying to figure out the why and just experience it, you'll start trusting more and more how this evolutionary shift in consciousness works, which is that you, the ego personality, me, I am not in control of this. I have to move with the shifts. I didn't know how long I was going to be in that state of like, I can't grab anything. Pretty sure I'll never be a teacher again. Pretty sure I won't be able to talk about my book. I had to allow myself to be in that and just allow it. I had to trust that whatever that was, was necessary. There was something energetically happening. And I would find myself in a new expression of myself, a new aspect of myself when I did. That's flow. That's allowing. That's trusting. Everything that's happening, you guys, right now is energetic. End of discussion. The case is closed. Slam the book. You can't see it. You can't see it. So you have to start to surrender to the unseen. More and more and more and more. I always know because then I was exhausted yesterday at the end of the cycle, whatever this was that I was experiencing. I was exhausted yesterday afternoon around 2.30. So I laid in bed from 2.30 until I fell asleep and woke up. I'm grateful that I have that life to be able to do that. Not everyone does. So I'm very, very grateful. And, um, If you don't have that ability, just have compassion for yourself and for others as you are navigating exhaustion. Exhaustion is one of the number one, I think, one of the number one experiences that we're having right now because the body is what is shifting. The body is what is increasing in frequency. The body is what is altering its uh, vibration, not you, your consciousness way beyond any of this. You're not shifting. It's the body. So the body's going to be exhausted. It's going to be tired at times, <coughs> especially if you're going through massive shifts, which we're all doing. Body's holding more frequency. Body's holding higher vibrations. The body's letting go of things, letting go of trauma, letting go of behaviors and thoughts and beliefs. There's so much shifting. So it's going to be exhausted. It's working over time. And there's nothing wrong with that. Really letting your body rest when it just needs to rest without this idea that there's something wrong with you is really, really important right now. Man, I never judge that. I'm just like, yes, I love, I actually love when I'm really exhausted. Um, One, I know there's a lot going on, work being worked on with my body. But um, two, I, I love giving myself rest. I love it. I love that. I love that those moments when I'm in deep, deep rest. Um, You know, I always wish that there was a way for us to see what's happening on an energetic level. Like we could put these goggles on during the day um, and and look around and be like, oh my God, because you can actually, on an energetic level, you can see energy shifting. It's all alchemy. So energy is always moving. It's always shifting. The way you see energy is through the the vibration of it, which is the frequency. So higher vibrations are lighter and brighter, spinning faster. Lower vibrations are denser, darker, um, more physicality. You can see it. So imagine if we were walking around or even just imagine if you could just see you throughout the day. 
or throughout the weeks. And you could actually watch yourself, your body, I should say, moving in and out of different frequencies and vibrations. I mean, you would be in awe. You'd literally be like, right? You, it would shift you. You would stop trying to pretend as if you understand what's happening here and that you're in control of it. And instead, you would just literally be in awe of how the energetic world works and you would allow your body to show you the way, right? Allow your body to, be sh to show you the way. Mushrooms help you see what's happening. Yeah. I mean, psychedelics will show you. We have the ability ourselves. I mean, listen, here's the funny thing about psychedelics or ayahuasca or any of that. It's literally activating tools within yourself that you have to see the energetic world. It's not showing you or activating something within you that you don't have unless you use the psychedelics. The psychedelics are literally just a key that turns the door that's inside of you right? So anything that you experience on psychedelics is, an, is something that you can naturally experience yourself. It's just that we have to move ourselves into higher vibrational states, higher frequencies, more light in the body. The more light that we hold in the body, the more we open up those doors that currently external psychedelics opens for us. You know, I don't use psychedelics or any of that because I trust that if I am designed to have that awareness, I will have that awareness. And until I have that awareness, I trust that I'm not designed to have that awareness yet. Although I understand psychedelics and I understand ayahuasca and all of that and the gifts that it does give people, the activations, the awakenings, the healings, all of that. Um, but I trust more than anything what I need to know, hear, feel, and see and that it will be shown to me in each moment. And until then, I just wait, you know? Um. I tried to speak my truth to my mom and I realized that I need to stop trying to change my mom or try to have her see my perspective. I need to let her be. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the biggest things that we learned and are currently learning and are continuing to learn, right? Is that we're not here, in my opinion, to try to change someone and to believe that our perspective is the, the, the right perspective. You know, somebody sent me a quote today and it said, I'm not here, I forget something like, I'm not here to wake up the sheep. I will no longer try to wake up the sheep. I'm only going to wake up the lions. And I was like, what? Okay, first of all, every lion that is asleep is a sheep. I don't even like the word sheep. I don't like the word lion. Because basically what you're doing is you're creating a massive divide. As if sheep are not worthy of you and apparently your fantastic gifts of waking them up and that you're only going to focus on lions. Problem here is that every single human, for the most part, has experienced themselves as a sheep, <laughs> right? And, and even labeling people that are not aware in the way that you are is such a disservice. It is such a disservice to call people sheep. <laughs> it is, it is, it is asinine to me. I was awake at the age of 12, wide awake. I knew about everything and then some. Everything that you could possibly talk about right now, I knew at the age of 12. And I was still asleep for most of my life. All of us have been and are still perhaps asleep, living in a state of amnesia, forgetting who we are and what's happening here. So what? So what? You want to know the way that you shift this planet is you stop calling people sheep. You want to know how you, how you assist in your truths and in your knowingnesses? You stop saying that there are a group of people 
that are doing it wrong, that are, that are lower in awareness or frequency. You, whoever you are that said that, you were asleep at one time. And by the way, you still are having aspects of amnesia in you. Because if you weren't, you would never say that. You would never create a divide. You just wouldn't. People that are lion, quote unquote lions are just unaware of who they are. So you would call them a sheep as well, right? It, like we have to stop. We truly, truly need to stop. If you open your heart, okay, what's actually happening with this person that said this is that they're frustrated, right? They are sad. They are um, disheartened by humanity, perhaps. And so instead of just owning that and expressing that sadness, there is an anger that comes out. There is a pointing the finger at. There is a, a hierarchy that is created. There is a the awakened ones and the non-awakened ones. I'm going to give you guys all a real big awakening. We are all still, sadly, quite asleep at what's happening on the planet. And that's okay. That's why, that's why it's so courageous to be going through this evolutionary shift because we're waking up out of any illusion that we've been in. We're waking up out of any programming. We're waking up out of all the ways that we have been taught to think and feel and be and, and believe. But if you are holding the notion that you are awake and others are asleep based on how they're living their lives, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. Everybody is going to live the life they're choosing to live, and that's okay. The way that you shift a human collective is that you learn how to keep the heart open and you love people for where they're at, period. That is a much higher vibrational state than to say, you're a sheep, you're asleep, you don't see things right. How could you be doing that? You're so stupid. You're so dumb, blah, 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 blah. That is a, that is a frequency that you are emanating out of your body. By all means, keep doing it. We're all going to do what we need to do. But this is, about a free, this is about the frequencies that we're emanating out from our bodies. This is about how we treat people. This is about how we treat humanity and how we treat ourselves. So if you're constantly judging yourself, right, and you're constantly saying, I'm doing it wrong, I'm doing it bad, you're going to do that with humanity. If you're accepting yourself and saying, I'm a badass, I'm courageous, I'm freaking a rock star, I'm doing this, even when I break down, even when I cry, even when I'm in programming, even when I'm in shadow, even when I'm in all of the human experience, even when I'm in all of that, I'm still a badass, I'm still a rock star, I'm still freaking courageous, I'm still doing it. You would then look out and say that about everybody else. It's the most wounded and traumatized that are unable to hold themselves in all of their shadow and all of their darkness and all of their pain that project it out into the world and create these divides of sheeple. These are sheep. No, they're not. They're just humans living a life that you're not living it right now. I guarantee you, most of you were there. And to not remember that you were there at some time. And it's the same thing with like, you know, I can just go on and on and on, but it, it's frustrating to see that because, you know, it's, it just perpetuates the programming. It perpetuates, it perpetuates what that individual is actually trying to shift in the collective, right? So I bring it up because we want to be so conscious of um, this person doing it the right way and this person doing it the wrong way, this person aware of what's happening, this person not aware of what's happening. Do you know how hard it was for me at the age of 12 to know everything that was happening on the planet? I knew about the New World Order at 12 years old. I knew that the entire planet <laughs> was run by a small group of people. I knew that there were 
aliens and UFOs and all of that. I knew that there was an ascension happening. I knew what happened with these different presidents. I knew what happened with children. I knew what happened. I knew what happened on 9-11, the day that 9-11 happened. And to be able to live in that awareness with every single person around you, not. And to not say to every single person, you need to hear what I know. You need to understand what I know. Don't you realize that these people are puppets? Don't you realize these people are controlled? Don't, no. Why would I do that? They will wake up in the time that they're designed to wake up. And guess what happened? 10 years later, 15 years later, 20 years later, 25, 30 years later, people are starting to become aware. They're waking up. The true master is the one that learns how to allow humanity to wake up in their divine time. It doesn't mean you don't speak and teach about it, right? And you, you don't you don't share what you feel like is your truth, but you definitely do not try to tell somebody that their lens is wrong. It's very difficult, very challenging to see things and to know that most of humanity doesn't see it. But it, that's what that teaches you humility. That teaches you empathy. That teaches you compassion. That teaches you how to hold. That's you. That's unifying in a in a world in which we are very separate and unique. Right? Unification when we when we come together and unify as one. We we recognize that we're all unique. We're all very different, but we're all one. So how do you do that? How do you hold that? You definitely don't say, I'm not going to wake up the sheep. I'm only going to wake up the lions. Or have you lost your mind? The lions are the sheep. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, and then there's this hierarchy. You know, if I had gone around most of my life and been like, you guys are so stupid. You don't understand. You don't realize. What's the point? So when you have people in your life that don't see things this, the same way you do, open your freaking heart and love them anyway. Stop telling people that your way is the right way. And if they tell you that their way is the, is the right way and your way is the wrong way, keep your heart open and love them anyway. Let them have their opinion about you. The more confident, secure, and humble that you are in who you are, you will not need to defend against it. And you will not push your agenda on anyone else. So if your mother isn't capable of seeing things the same way you are, if your partner, if your best friend, if your, if your coworkers don't see things the same way, so what? Next, this is a massive massive evolutionary shift in human consciousness. The entire planet is shifting and every single human is shifting. It's going to take a long time for all of us to, to step into the same frequencies in the same dimensional fields and to see through the same lens. It's going to, it's, it's going to take a long time. So if you think that arguing against something right now is going to serve some better purpose, All you're doing is creating a moment that's going to create conflict, stress, restrictiveness, tightness. Let the quantum field, let the natural process of evolution unravel for us. Humanity is continuing to get opportunities, right? The more that our hearts are open, meaning the more that we can accept and surrender to how we are and how others are. Thank you, Madison, for the super chat. The more we're able to do that, the more we'll, we'll be able to enjoy this life. We'll be able to find heaven on earth. We'll be able to allow. And it starts with ourselves. Right. Even myself three days ago, the last couple of days, just really feeling it, really disconnected, unidentified, um, uncomfortable, unsure. Right. The more that I can allow myself to just be that without judging it, 
without trying to put myself into some sort of experience or whatever, the more I can live in this sort of heaven on earth state, even in the moments that I don't understand, the moments where I feel out of alignment, the moments I feel confused, in pain, all of that. We're learning how to be in all of it, all of it, and still find heaven on earth and still be able to move in a flow state as a, instead of a restrictive, tight state so that anything that you're moving through with yourself or with somebody else, you're in that receptive state. You're in flow. Imagine yourself moving through a river all day long. Truly, this is a really good exercise to try. Imagine yourself when you are up against something, whether it's with yourself or with somebody else, okay? Whether it's a conversation you're having or just your own emotional state or whatever, the thoughts in your head that are going crazy, anxiety, right? That you can't, you're spinning and you're in, in anxiety. In those moments, imagine that you're in a river, floating, your back is up, your back is down, you're looking up and you're just floating down the river, experiencing the river, experiencing the moments. And let's say that all of a sudden you get into this argument with your partner. You're in the river floating and all of a sudden you hit a huge ass tree and you're kind of like wrapped up in that tree, right? You're having the argument, but you're still in the river. I'm having an argument, but I'm still going to be in a flow state, which means that I'm just going to allow myself to experience this. I'm going to recognize that whatever is coming up is for me and me alone. What's coming up? What are my reactions? What are my responses? Am I trying to change this person? Am I trying to uh, judge what's happening? That's that flow state. And then you just keep going, right? You're like, geez, that took a while to untangle myself from that tree, or maybe it won't, right? You find yourself at a grocery store or you're driving in a car or you're at the gym and you have some, some emotional state that pops up. The moment you try to grab the emotional state, change it, fix it, figure it out, you're no longer in flow. You're now grabbing the tree that you just hit, the emotional state or the behavior, or the thoughts, you're grabbing that thing, which is a tree in the river, and you're now trying to figure it out. That's not our natural state of being. The natural state of being is to say, ouch, ow, what is that? Ow, what is that? Ow, what is that? Okay, but I'm in a flow state. I'm literally moving down the freaking river. I just hit something, an emotional state, anger, rage, anxiety, stress. But if I am always in flow, which you are always in flow, you're always moving through energies, period. All of us are. It's a constant movement of energy to energy to energy to energy to energy. And if you hit something that feels uncomfortable, so what? Who cares? You hit it, feel it, and allow yourself to keep floating. Don't grab it, fix it figure it out, analyze the shit out of it, and try to change it. You can't change the tree. You can only be aware of the fact that you hit the tree and your reaction and response to it. That's how you shift. You don't shift the tree. You don't shift the emotional state. You don't shift the thoughts, the beliefs, or behaviors. What you shift is your reaction and response to it. So you change the way you are being in the world by recognizing how you are being in the world, not by changing the things that are arising for you to see so that you can recognize how you are being in the world. We get stuck in trying to change the things that are arising so that we can see how we are being in this world. And then we anchor ourselves in it and then we are we we are in these cyclical patterns and we think this entire time that we're in control all i got to do is change my thoughts all i got to do is change my behaviors all i got to do is change these emotional states no all you got to do is stay in a flow state recognize what popped up that you hit real hard that you don't like recognize how you are engaging with it and choose differently 
choose differently. I'm going to choose to just flow through this. I'm going to choose to not judge it. I'm going to choose to remember that it doesn't have control over me. I'm going to choose to remember that there's nothing wrong with me. I'm going to choose to remember that this is a version of me that I am stepping out of. I'm going to choose to remember that this is a trauma from the past that's always trying to tell me who I am, that I'm not worthy. I'm going to start remembering that I'm worthy. You don't change the tree. Stop. Honor the tree. Honor it. Honor whatever it is that is showing you who you think you are. And in doing that, your whole life will change. Because it's never about the tree. It's never about the person. It's never about the external situation. It's all a reflection of how you are showing up in the world and how you are choosing to show up in the world. Everything is flow. A thought moves and it's gone. A belief moves and it's gone. A behavior moves and it's gone. An emotion moves and it's gone. And then we choose. It's truly that simple. If we remember, we don't pick up the tree, try to pull it out of its roots, grab it, hold it, dissect it, and then say, I want you to be a rose now. I want this, I want this pain to be happiness. I want this negative thought to be positive. You fuck that. Don't try to change what you're experiencing. What you're experiencing is the experience, pure and simple. Don't try to change what you're experiencing. Allow it. Bump into it. Be in awe of it. And then choose. It's very different. It's very different. Because when you resist and deny and pretend that you didn't just hit a tree, that you don't get along with your husband, that you don't want to be in this relationship, that you don't like this friendship, that you don't like this job, the tree, you don't like it, but you're going to ignore it and pretend and try to somehow positive think the fact that this is a really beautiful tree and I'm going to just figure out how to make this a beautiful tree when truly the tree is a pain in your ass and it hurts and you just need to figure out how to let it hit you and keep going. That's the moment life changes for you. You get vulnerable and raw and real. There is a tree in the middle of my river that has basically knocked the shit out of me. Now what? So what? We all have trees in the middle of our rivers that we're flowing down, hundreds of them that we will continue to hit. That's called the human journey. The more that we can talk about these trees, the more that we can dissect, not dissect, the more that we can humanize them. Like it's human. It's okay. It's normal. It's normal. It's normal to be in a marriage for 15 years and you don't like your husband or wife anymore and you're really un, you're really unhappy and you, you know you don't have sex anymore and okay yep that's the truth it's normal to be in debt and to not have money and to not be able to afford things and to be in in using your credit cards all the time because you don't want your friends and family to understand that you have no money okay That's what you're experiencing. Be honest, be real, be authentic, be raw. Stop. We need to stop hiding the trees that are in our rivers because there is a freedom that happens. And when you are free, when you're vulnerable and raw and authentic with everything you're experiencing, guess what you're doing? You're allowing others to feel the same. We put on such a show. There's no, there's no trees. I don't have any trees. I'm good. Oh, I'm good. There's 1,800 trees in your river and you're pretending that all is well. And so then there's all these other people in your life that are like, shit, if she's good, I, what's wrong with me? Then I don't want to talk about my trees that are in my river. So I'm going to pretend that I'm all good too. And what if we were just like, dude, I'm, I'm not good. I'm a mess. I'm an absolute mess. I don't know what I'm going to do with my husband, my children, my money, my finances, my body, my illness. I'm a mess. Pretty sure I am a mess. 
And when you do that, guess what you do? You allow everyone else that may feel like a mess to be okay feeling like a mess. There is nothing wrong with feeling like a shit show mess. It doesn't mean that you are perpetuating that. It doesn't mean that you are creating that in your world. It means that you're in a river flowing down it and you're being authentic about the fact that there are trees that you are hitting. This whole notion, this is what really bothers me around, um, you know, um, your vibration creates your reality or whatever that saying is, the, the law of attraction. There is truth to the law of attraction. But the problem with the law of attraction in the third dimension is that we don't like to feel uncomfortableness, okay? So we try to positive think a reality that isn't actually there because we believe in this law of attraction where if I just keep myself in positive things, then positive things are going to happen. That's not real in a third dimensional reality because there is a lot of dark, dirty, uncomfortable, traumatic shit that happens on your in your river. And if you deny it because you believe that you have to hold yourself in some sort of positive thing in order to receive positivity back, you're denying the actual way that frequency works in the body. The way you raise your vibration and frequency, the way that you create heaven on earth is that you acknowledge all the shit. You are courageous in feeling all the anxiety, stress, worry, pain, uncomfortableness, All of that, you hit the trees and you acknowledge it. You courageously say, boop, because it is in that moment that your vibration raises. It's in that moment that your frequency raises. It's in those moments that your entire world shifts. It's the opposite of what we have been taught. The more raw, vulnerable, real, courageous, authentic that you are with everything that you're hitting on your, in your road the faster you're going to shift, the faster you're going to move into higher frequencies, the faster your vibration is going to shift, the more you're going to create what you want, the more you're going to find heaven on earth. That's the way the quantum field works. Everything in this world is screaming for us to just be real and authentic and raw. Be truthful. Stop ignoring the trees. Stop pretending that everything is okay. Stop. Stop pretending like you've got your shit together. Start getting real. Start being the first one in your family or the first one in your group of friends that actually starts talking about this shit that no one wants to talk about. Be that person. That is not only creating heaven on earth for you, but that is that is you becoming free. The more that I can just say to somebody, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm going through. I'm going to lose my mind. I'm this. Especially somebody that people think have it all together. Especially somebody like myself who teaches on how to navigate this. Who teaches on how the quantum field works. Who understands all of this. And yet... I am constantly finding myself hitting trees, saying, oh my God, what the freak is this? Holy shit, I'm breaking down. Oh my God, I'm exhausted. Oh my, whatever it is, so what? There is not one part of me that thinks that I have mastered this world, one part of me that thinks that I understand how to control it and get through it. I am humbled to my knees every day by this experience of being human. And the, and the shifts that we're having. I never, ever want to find myself in a place where I think I have it all together and I figured it out. Never. Never. I always want to be humbled by the trees. I always want to be shown how I am experiencing this world. I don't, it's going to be a very long time, I think, in my opinion, before I am holding higher states of consciousness all the time, all day long. And in the meantime, I am courageously letting myself go through all the different shit shows that I go through. And I speak about it as authentically and as vulnerably and as truthfully as I can with everyone in my life and including this show. Because that is absolute self-acceptance, self-love. 
that there's nothing wrong with you and there's nothing wrong with me. And we have to truly stop trying to control this whole process. And there is a moment where you will find yourself relaxing, <clears throat> dropping the shoulders. You'll start noticing how much you're feeling, how crazy you may think you are, right? I mean, there have been moments these past six, seven months where I, I really thought I was losing my mind. I thought I was a gonzo person, like I'm screwed. But I just kept moving through the through the river. I kept going. I kept surrendering. I kept accepting. I kept, kept allowing. I stopped worrying about what people would think, what people know, what people don't know. You know? When you're in the river, there's no destination. You're just in the river moving. And you're enjoying, imagine when you've been in a river, right? When you've floated, when you've been floating down a river, if you've ever had the experience of just floating down the river, you're just in that state of like, what's going to be around the bend? What am I looking at right now? There's th that flow state is such, that's our natural state of being, floating. Because you're just in that present state. It's not possible all the time. I get it. But the more awareness that you can br that you can bring, right? To to just practice, you guys. Just I know it went by so fast. It's already an hour. I don't even. I was going to ask you guys questions. I don't even know how the hour went by. I literally have three minutes left. What the freak? I don't get it. Okay. Well, anywho. Sometimes I warp time. It's really weird. I seriously warp time. Well, I don't. Something else does. But um, yeah, so throughout the day, you guys, just imagine yourself in a river. Try to practice that. I'm in the river. What would it feel like I was, if I was in the river right now when I'm um, arguing with this person? What would it feel like if I was in the river right now as I'm driving to work and I can't stand my job, right? What would it feel like right now if I'm in a deep state of depression and I'm in a river? What does that flow state feel like when I'm in something I don't like? Because when we are happy and joyful and laughing and dancing and in love or whatever those feelings are, you are in a flow state. You're not thinking to yourself, when is this going to end? How do I get out of this? What's wrong with me? Right? You're in a flow state. You're in the river in those moments. So we want to practice being in that moment, that flow state, that river all the time. Um, all the time. All right, you guys, I have two minutes left. Um, if you know me, if you're in my online community, Evolve, you know that I like to go on and on and on, but I am um, I am keeping this at the 60-minute mark. I do want to say that if you are not aware of my online community, Evolve, um, it is phenomenal, and I would highly encourage you to check it out, take a look. Um, we do uh, free 30-minute sessions with myself. We do online group coaching calls. Um, meditations, channeled messages, Q and A's, everything is live, five live events a month. There's an amazing community, a worldwide community there that is so supportive, so phenomenal. Um, it's just a great place to get support, to get information, guidance, all kinds of stuff. Um, so if you're interested in joining us, the link is down below. I would love to have you. It's called Evolve and it's my online community. Um, it's a great way to stay, uh, in connection with me, um, and, you know, connect with more people that are going through the same things that you are. There you go. I wanted to answer your guys' questions, but, um, I don't know. Energy took over. Uh, you can join from the Le Netherlands. Yeah. Um, did the candle go out? The candle went out. Partner hasn't shown up yet, but I'm, I'm open to, uh, to however things unravel, right? I, uh, no expectations, no attachments. I'm just living in whatever is showing up, you know? So thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for all your support. Um, and I will see you next Tuesday, the same time, 9 a.m. California time for Untangled episode six. Um, and, uh, 
I guess that's all for now. Be gentle with yourself. Be gentle with the rest of the world out there. And remember your inner river. Practice being in flow in the river. I love you.